Hi everyone, I am Pablo Terrazas, by President of Corfo. Even I couldn't be with you today, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to congratulate all of you. As part of Corfo and Startup Chile, we are proud of your progress throughout this program. We strongly believe that tech ventures can make a difference in our economy development, and we are so delighted that you choose Chile as your business platform. You are one of the best of your generation, and that is for your hard work. We all know that we are living in a startup boom era, and all of you are part of this bunch that can solve problems for the whole society through innovation and technology. Welcome to Startup Chile Demon Day. I am sure you will do a great job. Bienvenidos todos a este gran demo day. Very welcome, all of you guys. Thanks for being here with all of us. Thank you, Pablo Terraza, for your words. We are really happy to be here today with all, all of you. Now, the startup ecosystem is going through an incredible period, and it is no coincidence. Corfo, through Startup Chile, and many different players has been working for years, for a lot of years, to consolidate Chile as a hub of entrepreneurship and investment. All the success story we can see now from the, is the, the result of the hard work be, between entrepreneurs and those who have articulated the initiative to promote the innovation. All of us know that we have significant challenges in, in the front, but the Startup Chile, we are absolutely sure to be going in the right direction. A virtual round of applause to all the right impact entrepreneurs that we are listening today for the pitch. We have a wonderful moment for all of you, dear entrepreneurs, and we absolutely know that you are going to be the best for to have the best moment for your entrepreneurial life as well. Now, I leave you, Dave and Javi, so they can tell you all about the great demo day thank you very much for being with us all of you today and all the best for this moment and this couple of days working in the entrepreneurial ecosystem as well thank you very much angelis and welcome everyone to this startup chile demo day this is an incredible moment my name is david i'm part of the staff of startup chile and today i'm here with javi how are you javi Hey, Dave, thanks for the introduction and welcome everybody. I'm Javier Aranea. I'm the Corporate Network Manager here at Startup Chile and I wanted just to give you the hugest welcome to this amazing new edition of our demo day. As Angeles was saying, this is an amazing time for these high impact entrepreneurs as we know it in first hand. Today, we're going to see uh, these incredible pitches of 15 best startups of the first generation of a program that is called Build. And tomorrow, we're going to have the next program that we call Ignite, and we're going to take a look of 16 additional incredible startups. This first generation have been a trader in our new brand program called uh, uh, Build and Ignite, as I just mentioned. And these, uh, these programs were four months of a lot of work. Today, entrepreneurs from eight different countries will be represented today, showcasting high-impact businesses, boosting the Latin American region through the pandemic time. Yes, well, 
As you know, Startup Chile since its birth has been an international uh, acceleration program. And in spite of the pandemic, this generation was not an exception. As David said, we had entrepreneurs from different countries. Uh, we have entrepreneurs from Chile, Peru, Argentina, Spain, Colombia, and Azerbaijan that will be displaying all of their progress during these three months from Chile to the world. And we know that it hasn't been easy since the COVID-19 crisis started, but against all odds, startups are making the most out of it. They have been reached high levels of impact by increasing their sales, closing deals, and featuring tons of national and international headlines. We're more than proud of what they got to accomplish in these days. And tomorrow, we'll, we are going to be awarding the three best startups of each one of the generations of Build and Ignite programs. So these six outstanding businesses will be part of our alumni role of honor. And we're going to, go in, uh, we're going to keep on looking for three main categories. The most investable business, the most innovative solution, and of course, the fastest growing startup. That's right, Dave. And how are we going to evaluate these businesses? Well, we have today four incredible judges that are going to be here with us. First, I want to give a warm welcome to Agustin Foyeke. He is the CMO and founder at Fin12. So welcome, Agustin. We also have with us Joaquin Aval. He's the vice president. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Agustin. We also have Joaquin Aval. He's the vice president at Dila Capital. Welcome, Joaquin. Oh, perfect. Also with us, we have Andres Mate. He's the co-founder at Platinus Ventures, and he will be joining us during the second block of pitches today. Uh, so welcome, Andres, also. Perfect. And last but of course not least, we have our very own Maria de los Angeles Romo. As you know, she is the CEO at Startup Chile. So also, once again, welcome, Angeles. Thank so, you. So guys, after... Perfect, thank you. So after each speech, uh, one of the judges will be asking questions to the entrepreneurs, right, Dave? Perfect, thank you, Javi. Those amazing judges that are joining for and are helping us today in this evaluation. But also we want to thank the great partners that have been helping us, not only this year, but more, some of them several years with all the support in different things that they are offering to the startup ecosystem. So I would like to thank AgroSuper, Banco BCI, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Amazon Web Services, Walmart, and of course, this great sponsor entity that we have that is called Cowork Latam. Thank you very much for all the support that you are giving to this startup and innovation ecosystem. Absolutely. And also for all of our audience out there, remember that you can share our event and promote the incredible entrepreneurs and their incredible solutions by taking a screenshot and posting it on your favorite social network with the hashtag Demo Day Sub and tagging us at, at Startup Chile. Perfect. I think that's it, Javi. We are ready to start, isn't it? Yes, I'm so excited. So let's get started. I have the privilege to be introducing the first startup of the day from Chile. We have a startup that is a platform that makes visible and brings together the best services for the creative industry. Please give it up for Paula from Toplands. Hi, uh, I will show the presentation. Um, Uh, can you look my presentation? Ah, yeah. Okay. So. I would like to begin by introducing Elisa. A year ago, she started selling pressed juices. Today, Elisa wants to give her business an identity and invest in label design for her products. However, the long search, uncertainty, and high market prices may not allow to carry out her idea in the best way. Did you know that 70% of companies fail because they don't know how to integrate creative services like Elisa? Given this situation, Toplans was born, a platform that unifies all creative process connecting clients with freelance talents and suppliers, solving a real need for companies to find all services in one place. 
We reduce the time companies spend searching for services by up to 80% and minimize their costs by 40%. We make visible the growing number of services in the creative industry because only in our country there are around 550,000 creatives, where it is estimated that as a result of the pandemic, more than a half of this number is working freelance. And what makes us different? We know that there are different platforms that connect the creative supply and demand. In Toplands, we propose a highly innovative solution because we take advantage of the market opportunity of creative service suppliers. Therefore, in this context, Elisa could choose through Toplands a talent to design her labels and then a printing company to produce them. Our business model is based on the following revenue by a commission for the freelance company and supplier for each job manager and by premium subscription. Our team is composed of two co-founders. I am in charge of sales and user loyalty and Paula, which is in charge of management and administrative direction of Toplast. We are also working together with a technology company, but it is worth mentioning that we already have candidates for the CDO position. During the build program, we achieved the following objectives. We built a new version of our platform, tripling our sales in the month of the launch. We obtained important partners and we grow exponentially, reaching 135 freelance and 50 companies. Here, you can see the press notes about Topland's potential. And here, you can see that uh, clients love the uh, experience of Topland. In our roadmap, we have our vision in marketing, sales and operations in order to achieve the following objectives and then expand to Mexico and Colombia. As women leaders and with your support, we will continue working to help not only ELISA, but the 395 companies that are built daily and all the sectors of the creative industry to become the leading platform for creative services. Perfect. Thank you very much for that presentation. That was awesome, Paula. I would like to give now this stage an invitation to Joaquin Aval that he can uh, provide the first question to Paula. Let's go with you, Joaquin. Thank you so much, Paula. Um, really interesting problem you're tackling there at, at Toplands. Uh, so, so I have two sets of questions. Um, Firstly, I wanted to understand what's the vision for Toplands. Uh, moving forward, uh, would you focus in uh, solving additional problems for companies or would you become some sort of one-stop shop for freelancers? Uh, where do you see a larger market opportunity and, and what would be the next problem you would solve? Uh, that's yeah, number, number one. And uh, number two, uh, when it comes to marketplace or, or platform models, I think it's always important to, to nail uh, the, the core offering or the core product. Uh, so I'm always curious uh, about how founders define product market fit, uh, in this case for Toplands. Uh, what would be your definition uh, and, and where do you stand right now in terms of, of product market fit? Um, okay, uh, so uh, uh, we solve uh, for companies the, the needed to find talent and suppliers because uh, um, we uh, know that our clients uh, have uh, the history of ELISA. Uh, this uh, problem have all our clients because always when uh, uh, they finish a project through Toplands, they ask us, ask us like, hey, hey uh, where I can find a print? And uh, so the new step uh, is to include in our platform the uh, the target market of, of, of suppliers that uh, is very huge, but uh, we will go first for two categories that is uh, printing and, and packaging, uh, because only the uh, packaging industry is uh, more than 200,000 uh, companies in Chile and uh, is growing like 14% uh, per year. Um, um, uh, from uh, we have a, a very big uh, market not only from companies uh, because it's companies freelance and uh, suppliers. Perfect. Thank you, Paula and Joaquin. 
we are we are just in time so let's keep on going isn't it who's next Javi? Perfect. Well, next up, we are staying in Chile and uh, we have a startup that fights against food waste. It recovers fruits and vegetables and then intelligently reincorporates them into the food chain. I'm talking about Adriana Bem from the Imperfect Project. <laughs> hello, sorry. Um, hello, my name is Adriana and I am CEO of the Imperfect Project. And today, um, and today I'm here to talk about food waste. This is me. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, this is me a few years ago. If I told you how many times I have heard things being said about me behind my back, I think we will be here for more than only three minutes. She's very lazy, very fat, very immature, very young, very childish. Oh, I know I'm not perfect, nobody is. Um, but this kind of things happens everywhere. Just as common affects humans, so it can affect fruits and vegetables too. Almost one billion of people are going hungry while we waste one third of the food we produce. More than 1,300 tons of food are lost every year in the world. This is the reason why the imperfect project comes to life. This is a quest to change the perfectionist thinking that exists in society today. How does it work? We recover vegetables and fruit from farms, companies and markets and with technology we transform it to, product, uh, to food products for retail and e-commerce. We hope to be a big company and generate the least possible negative impact for the world. And what product? Our first products are six healthy snack bars but we think in a complete night on food in the future. Our business model is based on B2B retail and distributor and B2C with a strong focus on e-commerce. This model is replicated in other countries with their local food, so our idea is to scale quickly to some countries in Latin and USA. The market opportunity in Chile for snack bars in 2020 is worth more than 59,000 million Chilean pesos. And if we cover 1% of these sales, some are sold in Linea by Sencosud, we could recover more than 1,500 tons of food. In order to enter the market, we taste and validate our product with over 100 people and three local stores. The testing was a blind testing. We delivered our product together with to those that are already validated in the market, like miso, squacker, or cereal bar. And I'll wait the comment. The survey gave us results that we didn't expect, so include people from different age, like people in their 40s or 60s. This is our team. The three co-founders have experience in the food market business for more than six years. We know about marketing, customer service, food production, and we also have the contact product of years in the market. Individually, we're all amazing, but together we are the perfect team. Um, what uh, have we done in our time at Startup Chile? We managed to create our MVP and validate it with real clients. Regarding the commercial area, we achieved great alliances with La Valledor, CPM Foods, among others, as well as great reception in many stores, distributors, and we were even able to agree to a pilot project with Sencosud and Sodexo. Okay, this is our team. <laughs> What's next today? Uh, we are awake, uh, with away from our lands and creating strong business alliance. So join us to eat perfectly imperfect. Perfect. Thanks for that pitch. Adriana was really good. Let's go with the questions. And now is the turn of Angeles Romo, CEO of Startup Chile. Let's go with you, Angeles. Yes. Gracias, David. Thank you, Adriana. Congratulations. I love your project and I love your business as well. Uh, and I would like to know a little bit more about your logistic issues. I would like to know how you organize your logistic issues. And also, I would like to understand a little bit more about your growing. How are you thinking or planning your global, internationally, um, growing? Uh, how, how do you think, uh, or think about that? Uh, thank you, Angeles, for the question. Um, yeah, we uh, work uh, today uh, with uh, another companies. Um, um, they uh, make for us uh, the products and um, the sanitization, and they are uh, so important for us. And um, this is a replicable in other countries and in in other. Um, with other flavors on other foods. Um, it's, it's a really, really important part uh, for our company. 
and for the internalization plan is to start a internationalization plan. Uh, we uh, went a um, validation, uh, export validation, and we um, are creating a plan uh, with Protile um, for send um, products uh, to um, um, mature markets like USA or Mexico. And if uh, the product uh, moves well, um, we um, uh, we uh, want to internalize uh, our model uh, because um, Adriana, so, um, sorry, this... sorry for interrupt, <laughs> but I, I would like to know a little bit more about that because I understand the final product. I understand probably you have market for your pri uh, final product because it's wonderful. But I would like to know if you are thinking to to do the the, the logistic in in inter in the international way as well. You know what I mean? I mean, are you considering? the logistic issues in in the other countries in 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 the world or you are you thinking uh, for the logistic issues only in the local uh, in in the local country and and after that to to export probably the final product um i'm sorry i'm not sure i don't have time Yes, no problem. Maybe you and Angeles can talk about that that uh, later. So thank you so much. That was a perfectly imperfect pitch. So that was great. Now we are taking a plane to Peru and we are going to be with a startup that uh, is a credit technology enabling guaranteed P2P lending and other transactions between people using pre-authorized credit cards line as collateral. I'm talking about Luis Tao from Instacash. Hello, everybody. I'm very glad to be here. I will share my screen now. OK. So, hi, I'm Luis Chao, CEO of Instacash. It is clear that we all need money. Have you ever experienced how difficult it is to ask for a loan? abusive rates in compressible contracts and it can take a long time. In emerging countries, lack of access to good credit is compounded by the lack of trust between institutions, lenders and borrowers. Our technology will enable this trust between people's transactions. Imagine a world where anybody could invest lending money to others without worrying about collecting the repayment for the borrowers. So welcome to Instacash, the only lending marketplace guaranteed by the pre-authorized credit cards as collateral. Nowadays, the credit card's key authorizations are widely used in the hospitality, car rental, health, and local deliveries. And we rely on this principle to minimize the financial risk of lending. At Instacash, the loans are allocated directly from the lenders to the borrowers without intermediating their operations with our immediate peer-to-peer -peer transfers. For lenders, the money is deducted from their digital wallets only if the expected return is met. We have developed our own warranty algorithm called pre -op to ensure all these returns by reserving an amount of a, from the borrower's credit card line secured by smart contracts. There are 325 million credit cards in Latin America, where 65% of the credit card lines are in use, making a great opportunity for recycling this credit waste as collateral, representing $1.37 trillion in our region. If we consider that 38% of the Latinos have requested loans, 36% pay it online, and 70% of the internet users adopt fintech, it results in a market of $129 billion. Our revenue is transactional for the borrowers, applying a front fee, a commission for each repayment, and a dynamic interest spread. <clears throat> there are other lending options and investment options out there, doing more of the same. And also there is a risk and shading informal lending market. Our difference is that we are not originating loans or investing on behalf of our users. We are a warranty technology that enables secure transactions between people. Our innovation is unique, a strong alternative use and instantly verifiable warranty. This allows us to have an interest rate 20 times lower than the other fintechs and two times cheaper than the banks for the borrowers. We launched in April, growing every week with 2,000 users allocating 82 loans with an average of $1,500. So we expect to land in Peru, Chile and Colombia by this year and expand to Mexico finally, and finally reach Brazil in 2023. We have a strong and multidisciplinary team, passionately committed to this initiative with more than 40 years of combined experience in technology, finance and business. 
Potentially, our technology will be a guarantee as a service to guarantee other use cases in different verticals and also providing this service to other institutions. We look forward to any cooperation with the startup Chile and bring together the decentralized finance and a new way of guarantee that we all deserve. I invite you to be part of Instacash Prio. Thank you. Thank you, Luis, for that incredible pitch. Now it's the moment to give you some questions and it's going to be the turn of Agustin. I invite you, Agustin, to go with the next question. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Luis. It was an interesting pitch. So <clears throat> what insights have you learned from, from your customers? What, what is something that you have learned from them? And also, why do you think they ask for loans when they do have a credit card? Why don't they just uh, spend the money directly through the credit card? If you can yeah, share thanks something. for the question. Actually, the, uh, the most important insight is that users still need liquidity when they have financial products. And that that happens more in like uh, in a less developed financial system as Latin America, and we find that in Latin America there are many use cases such as education, healthcare, or maybe car and home maintenance that they don't use the credit card to to do that do that all those uh, consumptions. But the most important uh, client. And the most important use case is that lots of Latin Americans need liquidity as a working capital. So there are, there are a massive market uh, of people that there are small entrepreneurs that are still having credit products uh, and they are like having like banking products. They still need liquidity to, uh, as a working capital to invest in a very small business. And there are like, more than 400 uh, million uh, small entrepreneurs in Latin America that needs that liquidity. Okay, so they spend this money in uh, products for their, for instance, to sell. Just, uh, just as an yeah. example, is that right? And, and yeah, why don't they buy them with right. credit card? No, because when, for example, in our our low developed countries, like uh, less developed countries. When they buy a product to resell it, they buy it like in the very like wholesale, like very big market. And actually, ah, okay. you cannot use credit cards to invest in that business. And okay. that's that that we uh, validate with our users. Our main use cases are for working capital, for example. Thank you. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Perfect. Time is up. Thank you so much, Luis, for that amazing presentation and Agustin for your questions. Now we are going to Chile with a scientific and technological startup that provides in uh, intelligent and predictive environmental monitoring services in real time. Please give it up for Yanis Vasquez from Airflex. Everything is okay. Thank you. Hello everyone, we are Hairflux. In the next few minutes, I will present the solution for democratize the environmental information. In Chile, the atmospheric pollution kills more than 500 people per year. What is the problem? The high operating costs of traditional monitoring stations and, for the other hand, low spatial temporal resolution of measurements, high modeling bias, and low access to timely environmental information. Hairflex done the solutions. An intelligent and predictive environmental monitoring service for atmospheric pollutants with high space time resolution, versatile sensor node installation and quality, accessible and reliable information. How does this work? First, equipment acquisitions. Second, field installation and last. And third, hiring connectivity and display plan. Our revenue model is a software as a service. For example, as imagined in the right of the screen, the cost per month is around of 27 US for B2G and 34 for B2B. This includes installation, rental, and display. Our users are the industry, retail, citizenships and environmental authority. 
the benefit for user, for example, for industry, occupation and health, for retail, ventilation for COVID, citizenship, better life quality, and for environmental authority, monitoring in real time the environmental regulations. The competence are different with the state network, consultant, and similar service are that we cover real time display, spatial resolution, use of data intelligence, fixes and mobile monitoring, and forecasting for a very low cost. The metrics, pattern and strategy in process, $18,000 in annual recurring revenue and more than $300,000 in subsidy. More than 200 followers on Instagram and 200 visits per month in our website, Alliance with the Centro Nacional de Pilotaje, Entel Oceans and Ericsson. And for the last, the environmental ministry has saved around $50,000 per site and month of monitoring with Hairflex service. The progress in a startup. Since 2021, with the Startup Chile program, we have been to preparing the business strategy. And, with, and we have the first conversation with potential clients and venture capital, and we could launch our software for display data in our web page and mobile app. Our team, Hairflux lead by woman, team founder, PhD in chemistry, Yanis, me, master in physics and developer, Rodrigo, and environmental chemistry and researcher, Sofia, and in the team, the commercial engineer, Maria Elena. And for the last, you, do you join the change? Thank you. Thank you. We do join to that change. Thank you very much for that pitch, Denise. Now it's the turn of Angeles to ask you a question of this program. Let's go with you, Angeles. Abs absolutely, we are with the change. Congratulations for your pitch. It was wonderful. I would like to know a little bit more about several things. First of all, let me know a little bit more about your technology. What about with the patent or whatever? Secondly, I would like to know about your uh, market. I would like to know about your client. Who is paying you for, for your solution? And finally, I would like to know about your business model. How, how, how much of your business model is consultancy? Uh, and, and how is the, 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 the direct relationship with the cl final clients? Okay, uh, with the patent strategy, uh, now we are talking with the lawyer to prepare the intellectual protection strategy. And this is one. And for the our growth, um, for us, it's very important to grow to Latin America because there is um, a grand need to monitor pollutions, and the market is so big. In this moment, Chile has the the lead in this time in this kind of uh, technology and this kind of um, uh, issues. Um, um, oh, I, I don't remember the other question. Um, who's paying you? Who's, uh, who's your client? Uh, our client this moment is the uh, environmental ministry. Uh, now uh, we are the only provider of environmental monitoring with the sensor for uh, for uh, environmental monitoring. Uh, we manage it to be the only provider of uh, environmental monitoring with sensor. Uh, through uh, application in Mercado Público in the last month. This is a, a, was very important for, for us. And uh, the other client is municipality and Pudahuel Airport and, and retail, uh, because the, now the COVID uh, is a very big problem uh, with respect to the, the ventilations. And, uh, in, in in this uh, in this uh, kind of uh, client for us is very important uh, uh, solve this uh, problem with the ventilation. Okay, and in the final seconds, uh, if we have, I probably tell me a little bit more about your business model. Uh, do you have a part of your business model is consultancy or is directly the, the your, your your relationship with the client, the final clients is directly or is through a consultancy or or, or or do you work as a consultant as well? No, uh, now it's only with a uh, meeting with the clients. 
and and it started Chile program uh, was very important for us because we need the 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 solve this strategy uh, because we are a scientific and very technique uh, person. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Janice, and for that amazing impact. Now for the next startup, we are remaining in Chile. We have a startup that records manual tasks within companies, creating smart reports and digitalizing day-to-day -day jobs in an easy and self-manageable way. I leave you with Pateco from Look. Hello, hi, thanks. I'm going to share my skin screen now. Please let me know if you guys see it properly. Yes. OK, sorry for that. OK, hi there, I'm Cristóbal Pacheco, the CEO of Look. All of us know that jobs around the world are different. Even companies that sell the same products do things differently. And inside every company, there's jobs that need to be done by people. These jobs need to have a way to register their execution so the managers can generate custom reports or just say they have done it properly. But you may not know that this work has been carried out by the same way from years. Lots of Excel spreadsheets, documents, and paper forms. It is a slow and inefficient process. Why instead we give the companies digital freedom to make more efficient these daily jobs through the technology? And register all uh, and register the, the, the tax that, that, that they want. So we create look. Sorry for that. Okay, problem with the correction. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, my screen uh, lost the connection. No problem, we can see it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have lost the connection. I can, I can start uh, over. I'm sorry for that. Okay, keep on going in the slide that you have, please. Of connection, sorry. Sorry for that. Can, uh, can um, we, we can see it. OK, OK, so uh, um, I, I don't know what happened, but I'm going to resume. The job needs to have a way to register, register their execution so the managers can generate custom reports or just say they have done it properly. But you may not know that these works have been carried out by the same way from years. A lot of Excel spreadsheets, documents, and paper forms. It is a slow and inefficient process. Why instead we give the companies the digital freedom to make more efficient these daily jobs through the technology and be able to register and execute the tasks that they want. So we create Look, our SaaS that register manual tasks and create smart reports. With our easy to use admin panel, you can create the tasks you want with the specifications of that particular job. And then users can execute these tasks on our mobile app. Then Look creates a smart report that delivers you analysis and dynamic data in real time. And you can set this report to any part of the world instantly. Giving your company speed on the execution of this task, an easy way of implementation of this technology, and the freedom every company needs to get data for, for any task that they want. It's a very quick sneak peek of our solution in action. Our revenue model is a SaaS model that starts his plans of $570 plus, and we're aiming to the manufacturing and productive companies in Latin and all the world. In the market, we are proud to deliver the most fast and easy personalized solution, especially for the target we're aiming, and it takes eight minutes on average to, to create a task and five minutes to answer it, bringing it a personalized end-to-end -end experience. And that's what our client get, a powerful digital tool, redefining the world tailor-made and bringing it to the next level. It's so easy to use that 60% of our clients do tasks with no help during his first week. So far, we have six pilots going on on three different countries. Our clients today answer tasks five to 10 times per day. And in fact, our North Star metric record to this day more than 9,000 tasks. Today, our MRR is increasing every month. 80% of our clients move from free trial to paying customers. 
with look, we are reducing four data recollection channels into one and storing more than 40 gigabytes of data. With the help of Startup Chile, we have increased prospect of clients to 100%, have support and connections to close some angel investors, giving us time to launch more than five new software ways versions since March, and we have uh, made some partnership with some fellow suburbs. We are three co-founders that were partnered before on a software factory company, and now we are 100% focused on Look. We are so excited for the things to come, even we're changing our looks. And so, so much more. Thank you guys. With Look, companies have the digital freedom that, that they have been waiting for. For more info, take a look on look.co. Perfect. Thank you, Look, and thank you, Christophe, for the presentation. And please don't worry of the technical issues that might Sorry. happen in this new reality. No problem. Let's go with the next question that is going to be done by Agustin. Let's go with you, Agustin. Okay. Hey, Cristobal. Uh, thank you. Uh, nice Hi. speech. Uh, so, <clears throat> among your pilots, uh, is is there something common between them? Is is, the, is there a single industry you're aiming at, uh, or a more interesting to you, perhaps? Yes, of course. We are aiming to the manufacturer and product companies. And we have seen that that in this uh, special market, uh, there there are some problems that are, that are the same in, in all the, the companies. For instance, they, they use a lot of uh, paper forms and make uh, making the operations day to day uh, very slowly. And they okay. uh, so need to what have a way to, uh, to I understand. What, what are the main but, what are the main uh, uh, difficulties in selling to these uh, companies that you have faced? Uh, the main difficulties uh, are the the implementation of, of, of a way that that is different for for day to 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 do the, these daily jobs okay. this is the, this this was a, a problem but but I, I think that that it would be a problem that, that that would adapt very 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 quick and is there a, a case there among your pilots that has been particularly easy to implement or they're all the same. Yes, yes, of course, of course. We we have uh, one one client in Peru uh, that sells uh, uh, salmon uh, to to the to the to markets uh, abroad, and and they implement this solution in one week because because they have uh, previous uh, uh, apps and software, so they 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 done it very in a very easy way. So very, was very quickly. Great. Yes. Uh, cool. I th I think that uh, what? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. The internet collection is. Go ahead. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the questions and that presentation. Let's keep on going with the next startups of the day. And yeah, who's who's next? We have been seeing five, and we have some to go, isn't it, Kevin? That's right. Our sixth startup. We are going right now to Colombia. We have a startup that is a platform that connects e-commerce companies with digital content creators that want to monetize their audience by promoting products. So please give a bit round to Stephanie Bord from Gomi. Hi. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Keep on going. Thank you, Happy, for that intro. Um, um, Okay, how rational are you? If you gave your kid $100, would you let him throw 60 of those dollars away? Then why are you letting your marketing department waste 60% of their digital budget? This number is a fact, and it has three causes. Facebook and Google have a duopoly and control 60% of digital ad spend. Facebook raised prices by 30% only this year, and one in three clicks on ads are a mistake, yet you're still paying for those. The effect? customer acquisition costs are the reality for three out of five companies. My name is Stephanie and at Comi we have the solution. Our platform connects e-commerce companies interested in marketing their products and paying a commission on sales generated with content creators interested in promoting products and making money off of their audience. The Comi platform is user friendly and this is how it works. Once an e-commerce company has registered, content creators can see the commission it pays and decide what brands to promote. Our technology generates unique trackable URLs. Content creators include these URLs in their content and Comic can determine which content creator helped generate which sales and to offer a commission-based marketing solution. 
after a reader makes a purchase, Comit takes care of the sales tracking, reporting, and payment duties. Because companies only pay a commission on sales generated, this is a solution that guarantees the return on investment. It also turns content creators into easy to access advertisers, no time consuming negotiations, and hundreds of money of local e commerce companies, local magazines, and TV companies with millions of assisting the local economy. $13 billion. And since many global e-commerce are shipped to and advertising in Latin America, this number can be much higher. Even better, market growth is 15%. And because we charge a commission on sales generated, market growth equals revenue growth. As first movers in Latin America, we will dominate the region, quickly expanding to various countries. The key to our rapid growth the commission-based industry has transformed, and Comi's advantage is starting out where old companies are trying to go, prioritizing quality, content, and thus attracting big clients. Four months ago, we were just an idea. Today, we have launched our first campaign, incorporated the company in the Spanish um, incubation program for startups. Consolidation in Chile is next, and winning the extension is crucial for our expansion. Most importantly, we have clients and content creators successfully using our platform. Execution is key, and our team is very solid. I bring Apple experience at key roles in various companies and an international mindset. My co-founder is a serial entrepreneur whose powerful social network has opened many doors for Comi. And our strategy and technology departments are led by team members with very relevant experience. Excited? You are just one click away from the future of marketing. Join Kami today. Thank you, Stephanie, for that amazing pitch and for the all the progress that you have proved to have during these four months. Now is the turn of the next question that is going to be done by the Vice President of Dila Capital, Joaquin. Let's go with you, Joaquin. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you so much for, for sharing. <clears throat> So a uh, really interesting hard data on, on the return on investments. Um, would love to take a look to the, to the sources after that. Um, so, so my first question is, what kind of, of return on investment are early Comi users perceiving in relation to, to these other tools? And uh, the second question, um, and, and given that you compete against like two very powerful tools like, like Google or Facebook, and it's probably very important to deliver quick wins for, for the e-commerce companies that are trying new solutions like Comi. Uh, how are you thinking about scaling the, the content creator side? Are you targeting really specific and, and relevant content creators? How scalable for first initiatives to, to grow this side while keeping the other side interested? Uh, thank you, Joaquin. Um, so for your first question regarding the return on investment, um, our solution is commission based. Uh, what that means is that companies, uh, especially e-commerce companies, only pay a commission once they have made a sale. And that's why the return on investment is guaranteed, because you say upfront what commission you want to pay on the sale that will be made. And only when that sale was made will you pay a commission. Um, and therefore, you're only spending based on what you're selling. And that's what guarantees the return on investment. Um, but, sorry, Stephanie, so, so that's on the, on the customer acquisition side, but what, what, what kind of revenue enhancement are, are you seeing in these early users? I don't really understand the question. What do you mean revenue enhancement? Uh, so so uh, how much of, of additional sales uh, are these users perceiving? Oh, um, so th in Chile, we're just starting out. We're very early stage, so I don't have that data available for the Chilean market. However, if you look at this type of marketing internationally, uh, it represents about 20% of the sales of companies. Um, so commission-based sales through uh, content creators uh, for the majority of companies represents about 20% of this, of their sales. So it does make a big difference. All right, thank you. And, okay. and also I was and curious then, about, I don't know if, yeah, sorry. Regarding your other question, uh, how to scale uh, the content creator side. So we are going after uh, mainly magazines, newspapers uh, and uh, blogs. 
so like different sizes, but all, all, all people that are attracting uh, readers, basically. And um, we've had, we've been, do, been doing really well for them. Uh, something that has happened in the Chilean market is that it's very difficult for these type of content creators to monetize their audience. So w when we have approached them, it has very been very easy to close deals with them. Um, it has no cost for them. It's just like a new source of revenue. And in fact, we have had some who have already referred us to others. So that's a big advantage. And well, one more thing, okay. since we are going to be in mass media companies, that also gives us a lot, a lot of visibility that makes it even easier for us to be found by other content creators. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Time is up. Mm -hmm. A great presentation and great advances. And thank you, Joaquin, for your questions. Now, from Colombia, we are traveling to Argentina. We have a startup that offers a nanoparticle made of natural compounds that make pesticides less toxic. So please give it up for Matias Figliosi from Univio. Hello, everyone. Uh, I want to share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. Are you seeing it perfectly? OK. Well, I'm sure you all know that the carbon we are releasing into the atmosphere is accelerating climate change. But do you know that the carbon stored in the ground is twice the one found in plants and are combined? However, in the last 70 years, we have been applying chemicals that are damaging soil and releasing much of this carbon back into the atmosphere. And this is also a problem for farmers who suffer for soil degradation, must pay increasing costs of applying chemicals, and are facing more and more regulations. That's why at Univio, we develop an ingredient to make pesticides less toxic to the soil. At Univio, we're allowed to create a new type of product that keeps the results of chemicals already known by farmers, but drastically lower in toxicity. In this way, farmers can avoid investing in additional technologies and also avoid the problems of natural compounds. So how we do it? After 10 years of research, we develop a particle from a natural polymer we obtain by recycling the waste of shrimp that is affecting the Patagonia. From these crustacean shells, we create our particle that works by encapsulating the active principles of pesticides and releasing them over time. Ketonano is a powder that can improve many agrochemical formulas like fungicides and even fertilizers. So far, we have finished our MVP and received some awards and demands from companies. Recently, at the Startup Chile, we validated our product market fit and signed an agreement with a Chilean factory to outsource the particles production. And we are closing the sale of two pilot tests. But what is more, we have seven patents that let us build a family of products for agriculture and expand to other industries in the future. Our business models focus on the sale of these nanoparticles and we compete with other products in functionalities, but none of them have the same advantages of our nanotechnology. The global market for agrochemicals is 2,400 billions, and imagine if only 10% of them were optimized with nanotech, and if we could reach a 5% of market share, we are talking about a billion dollar business. And only in Chile, this could represent the reduction of 25 million liters of chemicals enough to fill 10 Olympic pools. Univio was founded by Claudia and Vera, two recognized scientists who came from disciplines that do not normally work together, materials engineers and life science. And we understand that keeping soil healthy will be the key in the fight against climate change. Join us to accelerate the global transition to a more sustainable agriculture. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation and all the hard work that you have done, Mati. Now the next question is going to be done by Ángeles, CEO of Startup Chile. Let's go with you, Ángeles. Gracias, Dave. Gracias, Matías. Congratulations about your pitch. It was wonderful. Thank you for, for your business as well. I would like to know uh, a little bit more about your patent or your strategy, to your technology uh, strategy. What, what are you working on about that? And secondly, I would like to know a little bit more about your business model. I would like to know if you, you are thinking, are you thinking in a, a B2B or B2C business model? Who is your client? Uh, how do you uh, do you sell your, your product? Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. 
Uh, we are working in our improving our IP strategy. We have four patents on how to apply these particles in chemical formulas. But as we decide to move um, one step behind in the value chain and sell these particles to the ones who are producing chemicals, we are now developing a new patent or a new IP strategy to protect the, pr the production process of these particles. So related to the, your second question, we are not selling products directly to farmers. We sell this ingredient so uh, our chemical companies can create a better and improved formula. Um, so we get money by selling these particles. And also in our business model, we have an optional setup service uh, of adapting our client's formula to our new nanotech product. Okay, wonderful. Um, may you tell me a little bit more about you as entrepreneurs? Who are you? Okay, we are five uh, co-founders, uh, all of both uh, of them, we are from Mar del Plata, Argentina. I am economist, I have former experience in creating other startups, but my co-founders, they are all female scientists, great scientists from Argentina, and they are, okay, they, they are the, the, the brains here who have been working on this for the past 10 years, so I am really glad of, of being part of this team. Congratulations. Thank Perfect. you very much. No more questions. Welcome. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Matias. Incredible pitch and incredible potential of impact. So thank you for that. Now we are returning to Chile with a startup that is a telecommunication plan comparator that optimizes customers' reality, providing users the best match between the plan and their needs. I'm talking about Fernanda Rojas from Quiero Bajar Mi Plan. Sorry, I was forgetting to unmute. Perfect. So, let me ask you something. Is, it, is there anything more frustrating than paying for a service that you're not receiving? Millions of Chileans experienced internet connection issues during the COVID pandemic, and telecom company had a searching complaint causing the migration of customers from one company to other. In this process, users experience unfair service charges and a lack of fit between the plan and the ability to pay. At the same time, telecom have long said closing time, fraudulent sales, and a huge loss of confidence. As a consequence, 170 people will change provider this month. So we create Get Over Harmony Plan, a telecom plan recommender optimized to customer reality, where you can compare and find the best internet, TV, and phone plan. Answering just a few questions, we recommend you the best plan for your needs. Finding a plan never was quicker, easy, and with complete transparency of the information. And providing telcos more satisfied customers, thus increasing their lifetime value. We operate under a commissional model, earning money for each lead that converts. Thanks to our technology, we can charge almost half of the current market commission and share our profitability with the parties involved. This means saving for the telecoms and benefit to the, the customers. Market size is around $140 million annually in commission for the fixed and mobile service business. Thanks to the support of Startup Chile, and in only four months, we were able to launch our first MVP, build brand awareness, validate our proposal with real users, and achieve our first commercial agreement with Intel, in addition to a bad conversation with GTD and other telecoms. During this time, we have been able to save more, together more than 12 thousand dollars annually to the 85 people who have trust us and we will continue impacting people not only in Chile but in the rest of LATAM. This thanks to a strong and diverse team of four founders with experience in the telecom industry and covering all the main areas of the business. We are joined by a transformative purpose 
which is to give back people the power to decide. We are Quiero Bajar Mi Plan. What are you waiting to save money? Go and find a better plan, fast, easy, and in one place. Thanks. Perfect, and thank you, Fernanda, for that incredible pitch. And this is going to be the last question of the first block. And this question is going to be done by Agustin, CMO and founder of PIN12. Let's go with you, Agustin. Thank you, very clear pitch, and uh, it's a nice platform that you have built. Um, I wanted to know a bit about the, if you could share a bit of the vision after you achieve a lot of uh, lead conversions, for instance, what is the next step? What do you imagine that you could be able to do then when you have thousands of people changing plans with you? Is there some next step? Yeah, of course. As I said, we only we not only want to impact people in Chile, but in all Latin America. Um, and after we, we find this product market fit uh, in the telecom industry, we want to help people in another industry, such as the financial industry. Um, as you know, now you can um, you can do you can do portability of your financial uh, products. So we plan to expand to that market and other other market that um, has portability in their in their services. Excellent. And uh, the the people that you helped change plans uh, did did uh, those uh, lead conversions. Uh, give you any revenue now, or you're still not getting any money from those changes? No, we are not getting any money from because we because we didn't have a commercial agreement with telcos, so we couldn't not sell this lead to telcos. But once we have on board all the telecom companies or most of them, we we will be able to earn around. Uh, 50,000 pesos for each lead that uh, we generate for telcoms. Okay, and so why why would um, the telcos want to pay you? Uh, will they get a better position in the page or why would they want to pay? Yeah, uh, they, they what they are interested about is our capacity of do a good profile of the user. It means that we can tell tel telcos the scoring of this person, if they are going to be like a lifetime value, a long saying lifetime value customer, or a not a better, uh, a good one, sort of saying. We also give them a lot of information because we do some questions to the user that want to change plan. For example, we ask them, um, what company do you have currently? And that information is very relevant to telecom industry because no one's know uh, from which telecom the user is coming Perfect. once they change okay. to we, your We're telecom. sorry to interrupt you, you, Fernanda, but thank you very much yeah, for the teaching, Agustin. That, that was awesome. Yeah, Javi, yeah. I think that we are getting in ju just like over the first block, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. We want to congratulate all the amazing entrepreneurs, great pitches and incredible progress that you have ch shown in just four months. So that is really amazing. So Dave, we are going to a break right now, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have just a quick break of something near five minutes uh, to, to keep on going with the second block of the amazing pitches that are coming. But first, we want to thank Agustin, CMO founder of Pin12, for his participation as a judge in the first block, and congratulate him for the great job that you guys are doing in FIM and all the support of the startup ecosystem. Thank you, Agustin, by joining us today in the first block. Um, and we're going to keep on going with this specific um, uh, break. We're not, now we're going to have five minutes. We're going to leave you with a video. What? And in there, in that video, we explain all the main, main concepts of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. In the meanwhile, you can go and refill your cups. You can go to a restroom, grab a coffee, whatever you need. Uh, just keep on, keep stay tuned and come back in five minutes. So yeah, let's find out with this amazing video. Thank <laughs> you. 
Emprender es por definición crear, desarrollar soluciones que no existían y pensamos que podían existir. Cuando el emprendimiento se junta con la tecnología, son capaces de transformar industrias, impactar la economía, cuestionar el status quo y generar cambios radicales en el comportamiento y la visión de la sociedad. El producto de esta unión son las startups, las empresas detrás de los grandes cambios del último tiempo. Pero partamos con la esencial. ¿Qué son las startups? Una startup es una empresa emergente con un potencial importante para escalar. Es decir, crecer exponencialmente en muy corto tiempo, multiplicando sus ingresos sin aumentar radicalmente sus costos. Ellas tienen el potencial de ser empresas globales rápidamente porque tienen un componente detrás que se lo permite, la tecnología. Son muy innovadoras, ya que encuentran soluciones sustancialmente mejores a través de sus modelos de negocio y o tecnología. Las startups innovadoras y de potencial exponencial se basan en nuevo conocimiento. En consecuencia, gracias a las tecnologías que desarrollan y sobre las cuales construyen, pueden resolver necesidades de la sociedad más eficientemente. Es decir, nos ayudan a transformarnos en una sociedad que logra más cosas con menos recursos. Un ejemplo claro es Uber, que a través de su tecnología y modelo innovador, soluciona un problema de escala global. Las startups son uno de los tantos tipos de emprendimiento, pero vale la pena definir. ¿Qué no es una startup? Las pymes necesitan una inversión importante, menos costo eficiente para escalar de manera global y su crecimiento habitualmente tomará más tiempo. Una consultora, por su parte, tiene un crecimiento lineal que depende estrictamente del trabajo y el personal dedicado al desarrollo de este proyecto. Una franquicia podría ser escalable, pero su desarrollo depende de la estandarización de sus procesos y no necesariamente de la tecnología. Las startups disrumpen, provocan cambios que moldean la realidad, transforman las industrias, hacen plataformas o soluciones que no existían ni pensamos que podían existir. Hoy no necesitas salir de casa para interactuar, trabajar, acercarte al mercado o incluso a la cultura. En Chile hoy tenemos casos de concretos de startups que lograron crecer exitosamente y nos rodeamos de ellas. Grandes ejemplos son Not Company y Corner Shop que brindan soluciones a una problemática relevante y creciente de escala global, usando la tecnología a todo su favor. Una startup, por definición, presiona lo establecido, viene a irrumpir, a empujar a las empresas tradicionales, a los monopolios que se quedan dormidos en sus laureles. Aquí hay algunos ejemplos célebres que podemos recordar. Netflix dejó a Blockbuster como un servicio ineficaz y arcaico. Uber, por su lado, desplazó al mercado de los taxis. Spotify cambió por completo el modelo de negocio de la industria musical. Startups to scale-ups. Ya dijimos que las startups son empresas nuevas y emergentes, pero ¿qué son las scale-ups? Cuando las startups alcanzan un crecimiento del 30% anual durante tres años, se convierten en lo que conocemos como scale-ups. Empresas capaces de generar una gran cantidad de empleos, movilidad social y de aportar al Producto Interno Bruto de manera importante. Las estadísticas globales nos demuestran que la generación relevante de empleos viene de la mano de las empresas que lograron escalar. En Estados Unidos, las scale-ups representan el 4% del total de las empresas registradas, pero generan un 70% de los nuevos empleos. Un estudio reciente de Endeavor Chile, junto a la Universidad Católica, nos muestran que en Chile las scale-ups representan el 1% de las empresas registradas en el país, pero generan el 40% de los nuevos empleos, siendo empresas claves para la reactivación económica de Chile. Los emprendedores actúan como una fuerza transformadora de la sociedad. El emprendimiento es esencialmente el comportamiento de buscar soluciones inteligentes a problemas grandes. Por eso, el emprendimiento se puede dar en cualquier tipo de organización. Emprender en una startup es solo una de las muchas maneras de crear una mejor sociedad. ¿Y tú? ¿Dónde quieres generar un cambio? Emprender o trabajar para una startup que solucione este problema es la manera de lograr un verdadero impacto y sumarte a crear el futuro de todos. Ser parte de un equipo inicial de una startup te da la oportunidad de poseer un porcentaje de una empresa que puede valer millones, mientras genera nuevas soluciones de escala global. Hoy el desafío está en lograr que las empresas con potencial para crecer y generar alto impacto puedan hacerlo. No es espontáneo, no lo logran solas. Necesitan un ecosistema, un entorno, para empujar a que eso ocurra. Y es ahí 
donde Startup Chile juega un rol fundamental. Welcome back, everybody. What an amazing video. And there are much more to come. So stay tuned to our social media. So guys, just wanted to thank once again our incredible partners, of course, AgroSuper, eh, BCI, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Amazon Web Services, and of course, Walmart. And last but not least, we would like to thank our sponsor entity, Cowork Latam. So, Dave, are you ready for the next round of pitches? I'm more than ready, Javi. I'm so excited to keep on watching these amazing startups. That they are part of the third generation of Build, right? This program that they came with almost nothing, almost an idea, a little bit more. And we have seen incredible progress so far. We're going to keep on going with eight more, uh, I'm sorry, seven more pitches. Uh, but first, I would like to thank again the judges are they're going to keep on helping us today and doing the Q&A. And in here we will have Joaquin Aval, Vice President at De La Capital. He's still online and he's going to ask some questions as well. Uh, Andres Mate, thank you for being here, co-founder of Platanus Venture. He's going to take the lead and keep on doing some questions in the second block. Thank you. Um, Andres, and of course, Angela Romo, CEO of Startup Chile. So thank you all for keep on helping us to uh, support the ecosystem of entrepreneurs in Chile. Um, so that's it, Javi. Should we start with the second block? Yes, let's go with the first pitch of the second block of this day. So here in Chile, we have a startup that has a service of try it before you buy it. I leave you with Josefa Villanueva from Proatelo. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. I'm, I will share my screen now. Please let me know if you're looking at my screen. Hello? No? No, no we, we, we can see it Not yet. yet. Yes. OK. What about now? Ah, yo, yo lo puedo ver. Sí, yes, yo también. Sí. Sí. Can see it. Well, apparently there are some people that can see my screen the other not. So, <laughs> I will Okay. I will do it again. Just a little technical issue we will be solving it in in short seconds. What about now? No? Wow. Eh, eh, yo lo puedo ver bien.
so sorry about that. We were having a little technical issue, but it has been resolved. So once again, here from Chile, I leave you with this stride before for e commerce Josefa Villanueva from Pruebatelo. <laughs> Thank you. So hello, everyone. My name is Josefa Villanueva, CEO of Pruebatelo. Who hasn't bought something online and had one of these bad experiences? Probably most of you. And surely the second time you have had the opportunity to buy online again, you have hesitated because you don't want to repeat that bad experience again. Because of that feeling of insecurity and uncertainty, today brands are losing almost 50% of their potential sales. And that's a lot. That's why we create Pruebatelo. Pruebatelo is a try before you buy service for e-commerce that allows people to try on their favorite products at home before buying them. When people place an order, they receive the products at home and they have 24 hours to decide what they want to buy or return. Pruebatelo's app integrates directly in the brand's e-commerce site to make the service available so people can place an order directly from their favorite brand. Also, Pruebatelo's app synchronize the stock to reserve the products during the test period and give them back in case of a return. It takes care of the payment process after the test period and coordinate the logistics with an external company. Brands that use Prevatelo have to pay around 12% fee over the amount of sales and people that place an order have to pay around $6 per order. Today, brands are solving this problem with different solutions, for example, making easy returns. But these solutions are not effective at all because they cause new problems such as accounting disorders due to the many cancellation of invoices or the reincorporation of products that were considered as sold. Both problems that with Pratelo doesn't exist. Let me tell you about our story. At the beginning, we didn't start this way. We started being a marketplace, but we realized that it wasn't a scalable model, so we changed it into a B2B model. At the beginning of this program, we launched our MVP and we started attending three orders per week and working with one brand. Today, after this month, we are attending 24 orders per week and having a monthly growth of revenue of 200%. Also, working with 13 brands. Brands that are taking the opportunity to increase their average order value, increase their online sales and getting new customers. This, oh, this is our great and multidisciplinary team with a valuable experience in entrepreneurship because of previous startups that we had. Also, we have the support of our partners and mentor Leo Soto that has been with us since the beginning. I invite you to be part of the new online shopping revolution experience and let's talk. Amazing. Thank you, Josefa, for that pitch. What a great growth rate that you have shown us today. The next question is going to be done by Joaquin, Vice President of Dila Capital. Let's go with you, Joaquin. I think that you're muted. Just give a sec. Sorry, guys. Thanks, Josefa, and thanks for sharing, and, and congratulations for the, for the traction you're getting there at, at Privatelo. It's very impressive. Um, so, Josefa, my first question, and, and, and I'm trying to understand how exactly your, your targeted customer looks like on, on the B2B side. Um, what are these companies' main e-commerce channels uh, currently? Are they selling through their own websites, or is it many or, or Amazon primarily? And, uh, and in this line, uh, is this solution uh, platform agnostic? Would you integrate with the small companies, mainly or Amazon channel as well? Um, and my second question, uh, I guess that nailing logistics is at the core of your business. Uh, so, so how are you thinking about developing those capabilities? Uh, would you leverage other existing platforms? Which, who would be your ideal partner? And, and also, given that Meli has very well-oiled uh, logistic capabilities, how hard would it be for them to replicate this very interesting proposition? Okay, so uh, the question about our clients. Today, we are looking to work with brands that, uh, clothes, that sell clothes and footwear uh, that use uh, 
e-commerce platforms like Shopify, WooCommerce, uh, we are available for those today. And uh, that have a monthly recurring revenue of around uh, $100,000 uh, and other characteristics. Um, how does it work for brands? How, because you asked me how they sell or promote a service. We integrate our service, specifically a button inside the sh brand's shopping cart. So people can place an order directly from the brand's e-commerce site uh, and not on the other business, uh, sales channels that the brand may have. For, for example, a brand it can have a can may, maybe say a sales channel of different marketplaces. I don't know, but what we want is to potential the sales of the brand directly in their e-commerce site. And um, I'm sorry, I forgot the second question. You asked me about the scalability, yeah. the logistics, something like that. Logistics. Yeah. How are you thinking about those capabilities, and if you're leveraging other other platforms? Okay. So uh, today we are focusing our work in get something scalable. And we know that the logistics is one of the uh, critical points of that. That's why we are working to integrate our system with a, an external company, specifically with MVMA, so we can make the delivery and the return uh, with them. Uh, yeah. That, that's how we are going to operate also in the rest of the city of Chile and countries because today we are just here in Santiago but what, what we are looking as I said is to get something scale, scalable. Thanks Josefa. Thank you so much Josefa for the amazing traction and the great solution. Now we are flying to Argentina. We have a startup that is a training platform for esports players. So please give a warm welcome to Leandro Guiara from Wombo Academy. How are you? Can I can you see my screen? Like this? Perfect. Okay. You may have read about esports in the last month about how the industry is growing or the millions that are invested in this market. But what are esports? Well, esports are video game competition that bring together thousands of people around the scenery to watch how a group of professional players compete in video games. To have an idea of the magnitude of this phenomenon, the 2018 League of Legends final reached more than 200 million viewers around the world, duplicating in numbers the Super Bowl final. And this passion to compete is shared for more than 200 million players that play every day to different kinds of video games and they want to increase the level. However, the market doesn't offer to these millions of players an effective learning process. Why? Because there is an oversupply of educational content such as YouTube videos made by unknown players and that content isn't checked. And if we add to that fact the lack of practice tools, it's like having a gym without trainers or machines. So players are by themselves to improve the level. Our value proposition is to be a training platform for resource players where we offer training programs created by pro players and access to training tools. And how we make this possible? By a monthly subscription, all the users can access to our benefits. We launched our first training program in August 2020. And since then, more than 400 students have passed through our academy. We have students in Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, and Mexico. 20% of our students are from the Chilean market which is one of the biggest ones in South America. As regards our competitors, there are some free platforms like YouTube and Twitch, but we differ from them because of our nice content and the close contact with professional players. And there are others like GamerClass and ProGuys that produce this kind of content, and others like Senpai and Gosu that have developed the training tools. But we want to place in the middle, mixing content with technology. During Startup Chile, we have achieved some incredible milestones. We have produced 32 hours of content for our academy, we have increased our community in social media, we have made partnership with important esports teams, and we have more than 100 students subscribers on our platform. We also have closed our first round of $140,000, receiving money from Israel, Argentina, USA, and Spain. My name is Leandro Cheria, I have a degree in advertising, I'm the CEO of Womo Academy, and let me introduce you to the rest of the team. Jan Oliva is in charge of the sales department, and he has a degree in international business. We also come on with an esports specialist like Fermin Besolo. Thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you for that presentation. It was really great to see all the progress. The next question is going to be done by Andres Mati, co-founder of Platanus Ventures. Let's go with you, Andres. Thank you, Leandro. Great pitch. Um, so what is the most important difference between building a solution like yours for the Latin market compared to building it for the US market, for example? Well, um, I think we have the, I mean, for users, it's kind of the same. We, we are now different um, from our competitors from the European market and the US market because of the language and because we can create community from Latin. That's our, our entry barriers. And, and now the, the, the customers are buying us because of the price and uh, because of the language, basically. Okay. Are you doing something to build community between your users? Yes, we're doing a lot of actions in that sense because we think it's a key fact to to pay attention to to grow in the in the country in the continent. We we have an arena, it's a competition space where players can train. So we organize different competitions of different video games. We made free classes in Twitch. We have a community in Discord. And we have professors with community behind them that we try to get to Wombo so we can grow with them. Okay. Can you describe the users that pay your subscription? In what stage are they? Well, um, most of them are, they are men. They have 13 years to 30 years and they play an average of three hours per day to video game and um, they want to improve their skills just to play with friends or to be professionals players but uh, when they want to learn they find that they get lost by the oversupply of content that there is in, in youtube twitch and other platforms okay my last question is uh, any of the founders a gamer farmin Besol is our esports specialist he's now in argentina well he he's the the gamer. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Leandro, for the amazing community that you're building. Now we are flying Chile with a startup that seeks to be the first laboratory on a chip, allowing different industries to uh, verify the quality of water in different stages of the uh, process instantly. So I leave you with Matias Diaz from Kitai. Hi, hello to everyone. Let me share my screen. It is okay. Can you can you see my screen? Okay. Hello to everyone. My name is Matias Diaz, co-founder of Kitai. We analyze water quality using artificial intelligence. Let me ask you something. What what do the salmon farming and the drinkable water industry have in common? Well, they both need water as a key resource, but not just any kind of water. Clean water, not contaminated, because if the water is polluted, you will have production losses, you will pay millions in fines, and it may destroy your brand equity. Let me give you an example. Only this year, the salmon farming industry has reported about 7 million in losses here in Chile, and the drinkable water industry pays every year about 11 million in fines. So what seems to be the problem is the current laboratory analy analysis method. Because you take a sample, then test with reagents, then count and analyze. That is precise, but it's very slow. It could take weeks. So if the water is polluted, you have no reaction time. So we want to help the industry making something different. What if you take a sample of water, then take microscopic pictures of the water and then analyze with a machine learning algorithm that will be not only precise, but also fast. That is what we do in Kitai. We provide a software as a service in two simple steps. First, we install our mini laboratory in our client office so they can put the water sample and in our hardware. And the step two is that our machine learning algorithm analyze the images so as a result we can detect multiple pollutants in one single test and in just seconds about our journey we start startup chile with just a conceptual model now we have a totally functional prototype 
we want to test our prototype. We are testing our prototype with one of the biggest companies in the Chilean um, drinkable water industry. We have a collaboration agreement right now, but we are not allowed to reveal the name. But anyway, we are getting our first reference and client. The next step is to find a collaboration in the salmon farming industry. Why? Because the market is huge. There are over 1,500 companies as a potential client. About, about us, um, we're four co-founders, and as you can see, we have a very balanced team between the, the technical part and also the business part. So if you know someone working in the salmon farming industry, please let us know because we are here ready to help and collaborate. And collaborate. Thank you for listening. Perfume, thank you for presenting all the progress of Kitai. The next question is going to be done by, by our CEO, Angeles Romo. I give you the camera. Gracias, David. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Matias, and congratulations on your, your pitch. It was wonderful. I love your business as well. I would like to know thank a little you. bit more about your technology. I would like to understand mm -hmm. a little bit more what is your uh, strategy about pa patent or, or, or the IP uh, strategy. And secondly, I would like to understand more than the, the salmon industry, who is your next uh, client or who is your next industry? Okay. Okay. About the technology, we, we, we take pictures of the water, so we create big data sets. So we train our model to instant detect a pollutant when you, when, when you can see it. Uh, we can detect bacteria, also sediments, and even hydrocarbons like oil contamination. So this is very singular because we detect a lot of things in one single test. So about the, the protection strategy, we want to protect our brand, of course, then a, a design, a designed a protection for the hardware, and we we want to protect the our software about with the um, with a author um, right protection, because you cannot uh, just uh, patent a software. Um, yeah, about the, the 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 industry, yes, we are looking forward to go to the salmon because our current technology with our model that is functioning today can be easily transferred to the salmon. But also we have speak with other industries. We have in speaking with the, the farming industry, the the farming industry because they sometimes have problem with the cholera. Because when you export, you need to pass several tests in order to enter a market. So th that could be a, okay. a great a great application. Okay, in the in the last few minutes or, or seconds, even uh, I would like to know about your your team in your team. Who is the commercial? Who is in charge of the commercial issues? I am. I am also an entrepreneur with another technological business in the past in B two B and also okay. B two C. Okay. Thank you very much. No more questions. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Matias, for the presentation and, and the questions, Angeles. Now we are staying in Chile with a free app that allows users to purchase and sell food to prevent it from being thrown away. I leave you with Gabriel Lara from Good Mill. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you please confirm that you can see my screen? All right. Perfect. So, hello everyone. My name is Gabriel and I'm co-founder of Good Build, the app that fights food waste. Imagine that you own a bakery in Santiago. Business is going back to normal, but at the end of the day, you still have surplus food that you have to throw away. This is not only bad for your business, but it's really bad for the environment. The sad truth is that one third of all produced food in the world is either lost or wasted. And Chile is not far from this reality, where we wasted enough food last year to fill 4,000 football stadiums. 30% of this waste happens in distribution, retail, and restaurants, and that's where we operate. In Good Meal, we connect food businesses that have surplus food with thousands of conscious consumers willing to rescue it at a reduced price. How does it work? It's actually super easy. You download the app, and that's where you can explore all of the associated businesses. Then you buy a surprise bag with the surplus food, and you go directly to the store to pick up your food and enjoy it at home. 
we charge a fixed fee of $1 for every transaction that goes on the app. And on average, every meal that is sold weighs one kilogram. This means if we can serve only 1% of the total food waste that happens in retail and restaurants in Latin America, Good Meal can project a yearly net revenue of 380 million. We're the fastest growing food waste app in Latin America, and we understand that in order for a model to be sustainable, the discounts on the app have to be attractive. This is why during our onboarding process with the sellers, we make sure that the food that will be sold in our app will have discounts between 50 to 70%. We launched Good Meal only nine months ago, and together with 70,000 users and 350 sellers, we have been able to save more than 30,000 meals. Also, our users love saving food with us, meaning that seven out of 10 customers that bought in May also did in June. Not only that, in really difficult times for the industry, we have allowed these food businesses to make 150K in extra income on food that was going to be thrown away. In order to scale faster, we've partnered with amazing brands like Dunkin, Juan Valdez, a leading food service distributor, ICB. 2021 has been an amazing year for us. And since the launch of the Startup Chile program, we closed a 42,000 sponsorship deal with Unilever, and we even partnered with Starbucks. During the next six months, we will improve and automate our sellers onboarding process in order to scale and expand our operations by 2022 and reach the milestone of saving 1 million meals by the end of next year. We're a team of 14 co-founders and together we combine more than 25 years of experience. Rodrigo, our CEO, has worked more than six years in the food industry, developing markets such as Brazil, Mexico and Colombia. Jose Castro, CTO, has, has, has led development teams for more than 10 years in multinational companies. Are you ready for the food waste revolution? Download the app and join the fight. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. It's amazing the growth rate that you have proven to have with Good Meal. Now we're going to the Q&A se Q sessions and now it's going to be done by Andres. Let's go with you, Andres from Platanus Ventures. Congratulations, Gabriel. Great growth and great pitch. So could you tell us more about the routine in the restaurants? Are the restaurants constantly uploading the f available food to your platform? And who does that? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question. It, it actually depends a lot on the kind of, uh, of restaurants. For example, grocery stores usually will upload the food in the mornings. But then if you take another example, as I mentioned, Dunkin' Donuts, they will only do it in the last 30 minutes of the day. So it depends a lot in the daily operation that they have. And uh, the people, they work on the, on the restaurants, have access to a platform, and that's uh, how they can, uh, they can upload it. And uh, in Good Meal, we, we understand that uh, the main objective of food companies is to sell food, not, not to sell the surplus food. And that's why we, in everything we make, we try to make it as easy as possible for them uh, to be rescuing this food. Perfect. And could you describe the users that buy the food? Yeah, the users are mainly women or female. It's 75% uh, female, 35% uh, male and the average age is around 32 years. It's usually people that are environmental, environmentally conscious, but also people that are looking uh, for a discount on buying food. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Incredible presentations and incredible numbers and impact that you've been able to show. So guys, now we're taking a trip to Azerbaijan. We have a startup that is a virtual office for remote teams. I leave you with Gulnar from WeTeam. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Okay. Hello everyone, I am Gulnar. Three years ago, I built my first company. But communication and collaboration with my teammates was very hard and exhausting because in my physical office, I can easily see my teammates around, walk up to their desk, ask questions and start to work together. But now I need to open Slack, find their name, check availability, arrange a date, create a meeting link and share it. There is so much friction, right? 
So I decided to get advice from other remote companies, but I saw they are also facing the same problem almost every day. They lose 40 hours in a month for single team collaboration in virtual environment. That's why we built Witim, which is virtual office for remote teams. Witim helps people to join frictionlessly conversation, co-working together, hang out in a single click with their teammates. Once you open app, you can see all of your teammates are around. You can see who is online, who is available to talk, which app or project they are working on. If you have any question, just click video or ID icon and your conversation will start automatically without any link, pin and waiting around. Also, by using our room features, teams can bring back their lunchtime conversation, whiteboard session into their virtual environment. We charge our customers $8 per user per month. During our program, we were able to help 54 companies from Chile and 550 companies from 21 different countries to work remotely. With the $4,200 MRR, also these companies made more than 10 million minutes video call through our platform. Here is our achievement. Our product is ranked as a top solution for remote companies in the world. We won the big international startup competition. We made strategic partnership with Startup Chile to check your day Epsom and remote tools. We raised Nine thousand pre-seed investment, communication and collaboration software market will reach forty billion dollar by 2023. We team provide synchronous communication, real-time team presence, one-click video, audio call, easiest and fastest screen sharing and cursor sharing experience with beautiful UX UI. In the upcoming day, we will start a pilot with Scotia Bank, Covert Latam, Covert La Brugula. In the following weeks, we will meet the Minister of Education for a pilot. End of the Q1 of 2023. 22, we are targeting to reach 50,000 MRR in Chile and expand our business in LATAM. I am founder and CEO of Vitim. With more than, si more than six years experience in startup world and business management, I completed my business education in the USA. My co-founder and CTO trial has more than eight years experience in software management and video streaming industry. Thank you for your attention. Let's create your virtual office today. Thank you for that presentation, Gulnar, and for all the progress that you have done so far. We're going to, to keep on going with the questions, and the next question is going to be led by Joaquin from Dila Capital. Let's go with you, Joaquin. Thank you, David, and uh, thank you very much, Gulnar, for, uh, for sharing. Uh, so, uh, so, so my first question is, and. Uh, Throughout, like throughout the need validation process and, and the early interactions with your users, um, what did you find out about your targeted user behavior and and, and specifically about their journey? Uh, where does this journey begin? Is it Slack? Uh, is it Mondays? And what other insights can you share there? And, and the second question is, how do you think about changing? very, very sticky behaviors, right? Uh, such as uh, opening your laptop and heading directly to, towards Slack uh, or, or to deviate their journey from Slack. Um, so yeah, th those are the two questions. Okay, thank you for your good questions. Uh, first question, uh, my first answer is that, uh, before building our product, we saw this problem as well because we faced this problem as well. And we've uh, made, um, one-on-one -on -one calls with uh, remote teams from different company configuration from the uh, who work in the Facebook, Amazon, OpenGo, Oracle, and something like that. And also is with small companies and they also face these problems. And, we, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when I struggled with these problems, I, I want to get uh, advice from this person, these people, how I can solve this problem, and they they uh, said we all we all we also face this problem almost every day, and I start to uh, and then I start to interview with uh, more than hundred teams, and decided to build with him, and so and write their um, problem, write uh, write it, write benefits that these uh, people looking for right now and then uh, build with him. A second question is that uh, it is true, uh, it's sticky behavior, but uh, before uh, selling my product to teams, I 
totally um, pilot with to the pilot with them and show our exact value and exact benefit. And then they said that okay, this is completely different than Slack, MS Team, and Zoom. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much, Omar. Thank you so much, Gulnar. Yeah, such a relevant solution in, in COVID times. So we are traveling back to Chile with a startup that enables as, as small and medium businesses to develop digital direct-to-customer channels with dark stores and logistic and marketing services. I leave you with Juan Pablo Yarzum from D2C. Uh, hi, how are you? I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much. So I will share my screen. Please let me know if you are seeing it. Okay. Okay. Let me let me start the presentation. So, hi, I'm Juan Pablo from D2C, a one-stop shop to solve direct to consumer challenges. Well, with my partner Eduardo, we have 30 years of experience in related industries and successful startups. And last year we detected an opportunity. To explain it better, let's meet Barbara. Uh, she's an entrepreneur who creates teas in the south of Chile with great quality that competes against the top brands in the market. She sells by her own e-commerce, but by that, but by, by the way, was created with the aid of Corfo. Uh, uh, but not being in Santiago, it's a huge handicap, and she delivers pretty slowly compared to other brands. That decreases her sales and consumer preference, and even worse, in some cases, consumers doesn't even know the brand. Uh, like Barbara, emerging brands are a growing market with e-commerce and med necessities. So we created D2C to solve the, to make the direct to consumer sales uh, easy by taking charge of the fulfillment and aiding brands to increase their audience. So we serve by first uh, storing in dark stores to receiving orders from your e-commerce site and three, fulfilling them in record time. We give clients visibility of the operation through our self-service web app, allowing them to see the orders, stock, and other data. Also, we discovered that showcasing our clients increased their audience and sales. So we use different strategies to accomplish it. Our business model is quite simple. We charge a commission for each sales ticket plus shipping fees and nothing more. Although this is a very crowded market, no one is focused in direct to consumers. So we found an incredible traction. And remember Barbara, she joined D2C in May and sold more than ever with same day delivery, raving reviews and increasing returning customers. Like her, 58 brands from different categories uh, are selling with us direct to consumer and we are very proud of that. Half of them has reached us to join, to join and also we have zero churns. From the end of December, our operation has grown more than 12 times serving 8,000 deliveries at, at this time. And we are looking for funds to scale, especially to open in Mexico and expand our tech base. If you're interested, please reach us. Thank you very much. Thank you for that incredible pitch. That was awesome. And thanks for all the, all the progress that you just told us. The next question is going to be done by Andres of Platinum Ventures. I give you a camera. Congratulations, Juan Pablo, great pitch and great growth as well. Um, Thank you very much. How do you operate your dark, your dark store and what is the role of technology? Can you scale that to other cities or other countries? Thank you, that's an excellent question. First, we operate the dark stores with with office or commercial space that is unused. The first one is in near Costanera Center. We operate them with a, with a hired crew at this moment because it's a lab, but in the future we are thinking of franchising the model to scale it. Uh, the technology is quite important because we have delivering, uh, we have to uh, integrate with a, by, via middleware with many e-commerce platforms. So we need to have this integration or middleware, then an order management system and also a warehouse man management system in order to receive the, the orders, enroute them and also coordinate the shipments. So we are creating that technology base at this time. 
Okay, and what are your plans to scaling your solution to other cities or other countries? Well, the, the direction has been that good that uh, by today, uh, real estate companies are reaching to us in order to, to, to use us as a way to, to, divert, to, to use and use uh, square meters in their commercial centers or in their office buildings. So we are trying to establish a pilot with that uh, uh, by this quarter and then to scale to Mexico and, and test that thesis in Mexico too. For That's the next, great. Uh, for the qu fourth quarter of this year, I think. Perfect. You said that 50% of your customers reach you. Uh, how are you reaching the other 50% of their customers? Well, we, we have we have done an, uh, an ext extensive scouting of the brands that we want to be on D2C. So the, the, our strategy was quite simple. We, we have reached the category lead of each category uh, and then uh, try to engage them in order for them to join and showing the benefits. And after that, it was quite easy to, by just reaching one or two category leaders, we, we have joined the, 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 the followers quite easily and it was a great strategy for us. Thank you, Juan Pablo. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Juan Pablo. That was amazing support for, for small and medium businesses and a great uh, traction. So for the last startup of this day, we are staying here in Chile with a fintech that is focused on contributing to the financial inclusion in Latin America, facilitating access to savings and investments for all. Please give a warm welcome to Ivona Aguilera from Tremun. Thank you so much, Javi. Welcome to Tremun. We are the hand that you need on the saving goals. Nagy is one of my friends. She has 40 years old and she is a hardworking person. She is a single mother and has the only financial support of her job to survive. So, so it's quite difficult for her to save due to her low income and high cost of living. The financial sector has become a barred terrain for the general population and for my friend as well. And more than 45% of the adult population in Latin America do not have access to any financial product. However, internet penetration has created new opportunities for providing digital financial services. This is why we have created Tremon, a fintech focus on contributing to the financial inclusion in Latin America, facilitating the access to the saving and investment for all people. Let's see how we solve this problem. People can use our website or application where they can easily access to set and achieve their financial goals. We are a solution that makes the people not save on their own. They can save in a network and obtain returns over the savings to reach their goals. At Tremont, we help to increase the amount saved by our clients through the ETF. Tremon is easy to use. Customer has to create an account, define the amount and goal, set the network and transfer periodically the compromise amount to achieve their goals. We invite the companies to encourage their workers to use the benefits of saving with investment in Tremon and contribute monetary value to its workers. This is a win-win. Companies contribute with the financial education, which increase their working engagement and identity, improving the retention ratios as well. Also, we are a company, the people who invest in people. Our user can incorporate the close ones so they can also contribute to their saving in one time or periodically. We create a smooth path for the clients to achieve their goals, increasing the saving faster and improving the percentage of these goals. Our time is about $7 billion based on the annual fee of one percentage on the asset under management. And we have a special receipt. Tremont is the unique robo advisor who offers and encourage a network that encourages and increases your saving and investment process, and an effective tool for the companies to contribute with the SDGs. We start our journey with an early stage idea, and of today, we are glad to say that we have a real product to offer. We have worked on the technical development, legal validation, and agreement with the regulated financial institution to hit our MVP. And today, we are onboarding our first clients to Dremon. Seven of 15 companies that we met are interested to implement our product. They recognize the relevance of contributing to the future and the well-being of their workers. On the other hand, we talked with more than 300 people and they remarked the interest to start the journey to get them goals. We are a team with more than 46 years of experience in the financial industry with the same dream, to fertilize the barrier terrain, bloom in the saving and investment fields. And you are very welcome to get on board on our treatment journey. Thank you for that pitch and that invitation, Yvonne. That was a great, great pitch and it's great to see all the growth. 
Now it's time for the last Q&A of the moment of this day, and it's going to be led by Angeles Romo. Let's go with you, Angeles. Thank you, Dave. Uh, congratulations, Yvonne. I love your, your business. Uh, wonderful, your pitch. And I guess, uh, I don't know why I'm doing the question. Probably Andres is much more adequate to do this, but I'm going to be the best. Um, or, or, or I'm, I, I tried to do my best. I would like to know a little bit more uh, about your your strategy of culture in, in uh, thinking and in, in, in saving, because uh, even you have a wonderful platform here in, in, in obviously the, the relationship in between both, uh, you need something about culture uh, uh, and why the people want to, to save more than just to do it. So let me know a little bit about how you um, face or uh, how are, are you in charge of the, of the issue of culture of saving for the common people? Yes, uh, the first thing that we that I can say that uh, today we have uh, our stage in Chile and in Latin America, we have uh, an increase in depth and the high uh, and a lack of uh, acquisition of assets in the in the common people. And by, by the other hand, uh, the people also uh, don't have uh, as much education in the financial uh, aspect. And they also feel like a fears uh, to ask for this kind of things. This is the thing that we okay. uh, would like to introduce in the in the culture, but not only to in our in our business, you know, in, in also in in spread this information and learn and teach to uh, everyone how they can uh, start the journey, even if they have some debts, uh, they can start the journey to saving. And I start to think about how to acquire some special uh, asset for the for their life. For example, the housing. Today we have a housing deficit in Latin America, which is roughly 43 million families. This is how some of the assets that we would like to uh, start to think about that and to help to the common people to get them this kind of asset. Thinking on the poverty is a is that thinking the house is a, one of the assets that uh, decrease the poverty in the in the future. Absolutely. And if we have some some uh, last seconds, I will let you know about your platform. I mean, the technology behind the the, the business. Uh, uh, what can you tell us about the, the 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 sophistication of the technology that you have behind your company? Yes, we have uh, internal development, but also we are working with uh, some open source uh, technologies and we are linked with the uh, financial industry, this, uh, which uh, allows to us to be a light platform to also to give some low commission for, the, for our clients as well. Okay, thank you very much. No more questions. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Yvonne, for that great presentation. And really, thanks to everyone who presented today. Congratulations to these 15 best startups of our first generation of our BUILD program. In just four months, we've seen like this great progress. Uh, so you guys really, really, really make us proud. Um, the people who are not going to have an easy job today are the judges, because uh, we they have to make a really tough decision, right? So we want to acknowledge once again Joaquin from Dila Capital, Andres from Platinus Ventures, and of course, Angeles from Startup Chile for he helping us with this tough, tough decision of choosing the best businesses of this generation. That's right, Javi. We have been amazed by these incredible pitches. Thank you to each one of the judges. We know that this is really hard for you in this moment that you are by choosing the best businesses. But it's not over yet, right? Today, we just get over the first program that is a pre acceleration program that is called BUILD. And tomorrow, we're going to see the acceleration program that we call Ignite. We're going to see 16 incredible startups. So stay tuned. And tomorrow, it's going to happen this second uh, day of presentations. Tomorrow, we're going to be revealing the winners of both programs, Build and Ignite, and our judges will be choosing the most investable businesses, the most innovative solutions, and the fastest growing startups. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attendance today, and see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. at the same link, at the same space. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>